welcome back and this is the second in our series of videos looking at bond polarity. So for the rest of this topic we're going to be looking at polar and non-polar molecules and how we can decide whether a molecule as a whole is polar or non-polar. If the molecule only has two atoms in it and those two atoms are different then the molecule as a whole will always be polar. The reason for this is if you have two atoms with different electronegativities, the more electronegative one will attract the shared pair of electrons more. This will distort the electron cloud and you will have one side of the molecule being delta positive and one being delta negative. It's important when you're answering these types of questions that you get all the marks for it. So you get one mark for stating the fact that you've got different electronegativities, one mark for saying that the more electronegative one will attract the shared pair of electrons more, and the last mark for the fact that therefore you end up with a distorted electron cloud. For molecules where you've got more than two atoms, you do need to consider the shape of the molecule. And you need that in order to be able to decide whether the molecule as a whole is polar or non-polar. It's quite possible to have a bond which is polar, but a molecule which is non-polar. This is where the shape of the molecules really comes into play, and why we have to study bond polarity after we've studied shape. If you consider the molecule BF3, this is a trigonal planar molecule, and that shape is important. You've got different atoms with different electronegativities, so the bonds will be polar. Fluorine, as the most electronegative, is always going to be delta negative, and the boron, in this case, is going to be delta positive. So these bonds are highly polar. You have a very delta negative, and you have a very delta positive, and these are all very, during this slightly bigger, delta negatives, delta negatives. So they are very electronegative, because you have electronegativities of 4.0 for the fluorines and 2.0 for boron. So there's a big electronegativity difference between these two. So these bonds are highly polar. But because the molecule is a trigonal planar, it is symmetrical. Therefore, the electron cloud is symmetrical, and these bond polarities will cancel out. Those of you who do physics... You might recognise this as moments, and we're basically resolving the moments. Those of you who don't do physics, don't worry about it. If the molecule is symmetrical, then the bond polarities will cancel out, and there will be no overall dipole. This is a good example of a molecule with polar bonds, but a non-polar molecule. Another couple of examples of this is things like carbon dioxide. Again, we have a polar bond, the oxygen is delta negative, or the two oxygens are delta negative, and the carbon is delta positive. But because this is a symmetrical molecule, if you like, these two are both pulling this way, they cancel each other out, and therefore overall, this molecule is non-polar. It has polar bonds, but the molecule is non-polar. Tetrachloromethane, again, you need to know the shape of this, and this is a tetrahedral shape. So again, it's a symmetrical electron cloud. And again, you've got all your delta negatives all pulling in equal opposite directions, and therefore, again, the bond polarities will cancel out. So other examples, F F6, BeCl2, they are all symmetrical. And that's what we look for. If the molecule is symmetrical, then the bond polarities will cancel out to leave a molecule with no dipole moment. And therefore, the molecule as a whole will be non-polar. Polar molecules, on the other hand, contain polar bonds, but those bond polarities do not cancel out. And therefore, there is an overall dipole. So to be a polar molecule, you've got to have two or more different atoms. The bonds themselves must be polar and the shape of the molecule must be asymmetric. In other words, non-symmetrical. So therefore, the bond polarities do not cancel out and there is an overall dipole moment. And we're going to look at a couple of examples of these. So if we consider the water molecule, you have an oxygen, which is covalently bonded 
to two hydrogens with the single bonds between the oxygen and hydrogens, and oxygen has two lone pairs of electrons. So we have our oxygen and we have our two hydrogens. So we have a delta positive ends, because remember oxygen is quite electronegative and a delta negative this end. So this is also the shape and you have this bond angle of 104.5. So this is an unsymmetrical electron cloud. The bond polarities do not cancel out and therefore this is a very important polar molecule. Trichloromethane is another good example of a hydrogen here. We have three chlorine atoms and the carbon. So the chlorines are all very delta negative. They will have a high electronegativity value. And the hydrogen actually ends up in this case as delta positive. So again, we end up with an unsymmetrical electron cloud. This hydrogen carbon bond, yes, is polar, but there's such a small electronegativity difference between them that we usually classify the CH bond as non-polar. But do remember, anything which is not identical is always going to be slightly polar. But for most cases, the polarity of this bond is so small, it generally can be ignored. If we look at the shape again of the CH Cr3 molecule, it's a tetrahedral shape, bond angle is 109, and we can say that this end of the molecule is going to be delta negative, and this end is going to be delta positive, so it has an unsymmetrical electron cloud, and therefore the bond polarities do not cancel out, and therefore this is a polar molecule. We can test whether or not a molecule is polar or nonpolar by setting up the experiment on page 7. So we've got a burette, in this case with water in it, and a charged rod. As you open up the burette, you have a stream of water, and if it's deflected by the charged rod, we say that the molecule is polar. So it's attracted towards an object with an electrostatic charge because the polar molecules tend to move and rotate because the charge on one side of the molecules is attracted to the opposite charge on the object. This is an important practical and you need to be able to describe it for the exam. We can see here that we have polar and non-polar molecules. Um, here you've got the carbon-hydrogen bond. Now this bond technically is polar, but because the molecule overall is non-polar, it does not deflect the jets. The carbon-hydrogen bond Generally speaking, we don't consider it polar enough in reactions, but it does have a slight polarity. So, for example, it will still absorb IR radiation, and that's why things like methane are a strong greenhouse gas, because the CH bond is polar enough to absorb IR radiation. And that's what makes it a greenhouse gas, its ability to change its dipole moment by absorbing IR radiation. So I'd like you to pause the video at this point and decide whether or not these molecules are polar or non-polar molecules. So you can see here these divide up into two sets, po three polar and three non-polar molecules. The one that students get confused with is this one, difluoromethane. You have to remember that this is a tetrahedral molecule, not a planar molecule. So the bond polarities are not going to cancel out. You've got a side which is delta positive and a side which is delta negative. Also, SO2 is a polar molecule. When you compare it with CO2, CO2 is a linear molecule and therefore the bond polarities cancel out. But this is not a linear molecule. This is bent and therefore the bond polarities do not cancel out. The next set, you have two polar and three nonpolar. The molecule on the end, you have a delta positive end and a delta negative end. This is trichloromethane. You also have the oxygens here, and they are very delta negative, delta negative there, and you have this end, which is delta positive. So you have delta positive, delta negative ends. The molecules with the delta positive and delta negative, the one you need to be careful of is this one, 
uh, fluorine with chlorine. Fluorine is more electronegative than chlorine, so therefore is able to pull out the positive side of chlorine, and chlorine ends up delta positive because the fluorine is always delta negative. Uh, the carbon dioxide, again, notice that this is a linear molecule, as is the tetrahedral, and therefore these two are your nonpolar molecules. So the two molecules which are nonpolar are obviously the carbon dioxide and the tetrachloromethane. I'm going to use carbon dioxide as my example. So carbon dioxide has polar bonds because there's a big electronegativity difference between the carbon and the oxygen, but the molecule overall is linear and therefore the bond polarities cancel out. Therefore, the bond of the electron cloud is symmetrical and the molecule overall is non-polar.